Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my friend here, talented musician, Julian Falcone, or better known as Falc One. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me, boss. Of course, buddy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey. I've seen you uh, grow as an artist. Um, you know, it, it's really inspiring in a way. You've been uh, kind of thriving through this pandemic. How, how, hey, yeah, how I, are you feeling? I, 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 uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to get the as much music as I possibly can out, uh, you know, give people something to distract them with the, uh, with the whole pandemic thing. So I feel like now's the time to just go full throttle into anything that you want to pursue. Right. So, yeah, exactly. And, you know, just, uh, hearing that response, you have a very optimistic kind of positive attitude towards it. And that's the best way to kind of fight this, uh, you know, circumstance that we're in, you know, with these lockdowns and these restrictions. You know what yeah, I, mean? I think and, that's uh, the uh, the only way to do it, or else you'll you'll kind of make yourself go a little a little crazy. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that is you know the, the, I'm a big advocate of being creative. That's how I stay busy. You know, whether it's drawing, whether it's podcast, whether it's filmmaking, and you know having that approach. Like a lot of people say, oh, I just need to get out and interact, and it's like, yeah. In the meantime, you can do something for yourself. You can reflect on your thoughts. You can figure out new passions, new hobbies, or really triple down on them, kind of like what you're doing. And, you know, because yeah. like I said, before the pandemic, I, I've been following your journey and I know that you always were pursuing this musical career. And now it's like uh, you're just kind of going down on it. You have a lot of things I want to discuss. You know, you're releasing uh, singles. You're uh, got this new merch line out, Falc One. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, really cool, man. Yeah, some streetwear. So uh, a lot of great stuff. And um, yeah, uh, like I said, for a while now, I've been following your music and your development as an artist through social media. But I noticed from your content that you attended St. Elizabeth High School and were enrolled at the Regional Arts Program for Music. And I wanted to know, like, tell me about your experience in the high school program and did it serve as an inspiration to your dreams? So I think, like, my experience there was, was terrific. Like, I have to say, like, it was something where it was like, yeah, I'd be at school, right? I'd be, like, chilling with my friends, like, and we would just, you know, goof off, you know, do our regular stuff. But then I yeah. had that, like, one period, right? That Just, like, that one class where I could just hone in, relax, do something that I loved. And I did it every single day for four years. Right. So I found it just so beneficial, just like kind of honing in. Like I knew, I kind of knew before high school, like this is what I want to do with my life. Like I love singing. I love just like being on stage. I love performing, but it was kind of like reassurance where it's like, okay, I'm doing this every day. If you don't love it, you're going to get kind of sick of it. Right. So, and I found that every day it was just like, I could just relax, go yeah. in there you know, just vibe out. I had some incredible people uh, that I met through the program. Um, uh, I've, I'm actually, as well as I do the, the Falcon One stuff, I'm also in a, a duo called the 108. And I met the other half of uh, the 108 in the vocal program. So, I mean, it really did lead up to uh, kind of making sure like this is what I really wanted to do. Um, I don't think it uh, was the the reason that I got into like pursuing music that, like I, I wanted to do that before, but again, it, it just reassured kind of who, who I really wanted to be and what I really wanted to pursue. It was kind of like, yeah, this is for sure. It, you know, like it kind of had that moment where it was like, yeah, this is it. This is, like this it, is clicked, for sure. it clicked for you. And, and, you know, like, cause I went to, I should mention, I'm also a St. Elizabeth alumni, if you will. And, uh, Let's you know, go. I, yeah. Right. And I never, you know, I was always artistic at heart and I never really cared for the sports, but I never had the courage to kind of pursue the rap program, um, as we call it. And, and like I said, to, to know that you were in the program and you did four years, like you, you were consistent you didn't drop out. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, I did I, like a, a bunch of people, like I said, cause like you're doing it every day. If you don't have the passion for it, yeah, you're going to, you're going to lose it. Right. You're not going to want to do it. But for me, it was like, yeah, there was not a doubt in my mind. Like from grade nine to grade 12, I was going to do it back to fun. And, and even though there's, yeah. there was uh sorry to interrupt you. No, no, um, go ahead. Go even, ahead. even, even though there was uh, some musical stuff that wasn't really like my forte, like we'd be seeing like, you know, more like opera classical stuff sometimes stuff that wasn't yeah. really for me. It, it also in a way challenged me and didn't, didn't make me narrow minded with like the music that I, that I enjoy or that I listen to. Like uh, I find that because of the program, I'm not so, just focused on, you know, music today, rap music or stuff that like, you know, is more mainstream now. I, I have more of like a broader sense of the the music that I enjoy and I listen to. Yeah. So it, it kind of, you're saying it developed an appreciation more for the music. Yeah. Especially yeah. from like old, like music from like the, the 1800s where it's like, yo, I'm not, 
I'm not <laughs> yeah, going to listen to this, yeah. like, right? But it was like, I appreciated, not so much, I loved the music, but I appreciated like, wow, like they made an incredible harmony here. Or like, you know, how did they think of this at the end? Like there's like an abrupt stop that like catches the audience breath. Like, you know, it just like those things was kind of like, okay, this is cool. And also like, I, I, I love music and like, I, I'm good at writing melodies, but I'm not good. I wasn't good at music theory. So this kind of gave me like the rap program kind of gave me that, that theory and that theoretical kind of standpoint on music where I was like, okay, this is how like the notes look on a bar. This is how, you know, where before that I, I really had no idea. So it kind of wow. gave me some knowledge about the stuff that I was actually doing. It's like, oh, I'm singing this note. What note is that on the, on the, oh, that's an A, you know, all, all that stuff. Right. So I kind of, it was like, it turned my passion to like something that I'm actually not mastered in, but something that like I actually like learned and, and gained a lot more knowledge in. Yeah. And from what I hear, like, it sounds like it wasn't just inspirational. It was educational. Like you actually got something out of it that you're now applying to your career. And I love that you said before where you stuck it out. Uh, a lot of people, because a lot of friends I know that they dropped out after grade nine, because it was either taking over their schedule or let's be honest, high school peer pressure. And, you know, people are commenting like, why are you in the arts, blah, blah, blah. And with yourself, it's like, no, this is what I want to do. And you were mature enough or self-aware enough to say, if I want to make any sort of career out of this, I got to, you know, not listen to anybody and just kind of go for it. Is that how you handle yeah. it, man? Yeah. Like, I think that's, ex that's kind of exactly it. Like, I feel like if you have a passion for something, you got to go full, full throttle with it. Right. Because like in the sense of, of the rap program, it is, it is demanding. Like you do have to stay after school. You know, there is things that you have to do on a daily basis. You have to keep up. Right. But at the same time, it's, it's kind of that, that, that cliche saying, you know, you do what you love. You're not actually working. Right. And it, it, that's what it kind of felt like to me, like as, 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 as much as it was daunting and as much as there was like very time consuming tasks, uh, I enjoyed it. So I didn't feel those pressures or those, those like, Oh man, I can't even chill with my friends right now. Cause I gotta go sing this thing. I gotta go yeah, perform. Yeah. Right. It was like, Oh no, like I gotta go perform. I'll chill with my friends later. But like this, this is this what is I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. The only thing that like kind of, kind of cheesed me was uh, we had, um, we had choir on Tuesday nights oh, and okay. we had to go and, uh, I wanted to join the soccer team and it was also Tuesday nights and the coach of the soccer team is like, Hey, like, I really appreciate it. Like, I really want you to come out and, and, and play for us. Right. Kind of knew that I was, I, I played soccer and I couldn't go because I had choir. And then that was like one of the, like the, the few times where I was like, ah, you know, I would, I would love to have kind of balance it out. But besides that, I really have no regrets of truly focusing all my attention on, uh, on, on the rap program. Yeah, no, and it, and, it, and it paid off, like you said, like, I want to go back to what you were saying about learning music from the 1800s, like classical music and things like that. Uh, I always, per, you know, uh, connected or related back to filmmaking. And if you want to have any sort of talent or any sort of, uh, you know, potential in that industry, you have to respect the past. You have to, like, there's a lot of filmmakers I come across where they say, I don't have, like, they, they strike me as frustrating because I say to myself you know I ask them do you have an inspiration and they're like oh I'm not inspired inspired by anyone I said well how are you not inspired by anyone uh, like yeah. obviously you don't have to replicate anyone's career but you have to at least respect again the past you have to see like where the greats come from and whether you like it or not you are your music is inspired by something right like exactly. or someone that's that's already come before you um obviously you make it your own but the fact that you respect that, uh, you know, makes me have more respect for you as an artist, really, because you're, you're seeing that. Uh, I think that's what that's why music um, certain artists uh, are able to make their music stand the test of time, uh, because, again, they understand like the science behind it as much as it's an art form. There's like a science, like you were saying, like reading yeah. the music and how notes appear on the page and just studying it properly, as opposed to what you hear now. Most of the music that you hear is just like thrown out there. And they wonder why it's not maybe going far. Um, do no, you, for do sure. You, yeah. Do you, do you agree I, with I, that? I, I totally agree. And I'll, I'll give you kind of like an example, which kind of even like furthers your point. Sure. Like if you look at a lot of um, even like rap music now where you don't think that, oh, they might, they, they're all well, rap music. Like they're not taking inspirations from the past. They're not looking at the past. If you look at almost, let's say like 60% of rap music, right? The, the beats of those songs, like they're all sampled. They're all just shifted and, and, and the producers are the ones who are like looking back at, 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 at like past music and they're studying past music and how people did things and, you know, different, um, 
different like incredible sounds, which they're able to get inspired and they're able to make it their own completely, right? Where they're shifting the notes, they're pitching it down, they're doing something crazy, right? Where they're taking this old vibe and making it new, but they're still respecting that old, like th there's a reason why they're using that as a sample, right? Yeah. There's, there's a reason why they're, they're, they're including that in their beat and it's just not all from them. It's kind of like gives the viewer this familiar sound, this like this old and new kind of thing mixed together. Like you look at Drake, Kanye, like people who have like incredibly produced music and it's it's like always sampled like i don't want to say always but like it's, yeah. it's just majority sampled like um you know the song blood on the leaves by kanye west yeah it sounds yeah it sounds familiar yeah so, i don't know like, i don't know that, i should mention i don't know song names but if i hear the tune i'll it know like, it. like, <laughs> i'm bad with it yeah leaves. like so like, like yeah, it's like yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. that right yeah um and uh it's like an old like song from like the 60s by like nina simone and she's the one who's kind of singing it and they kind of pitch her voice up and i, I was just like looking at how they do things and it's just incredible to me how like again they're able to respect the past they're able to learn from what musicians did in the past and then they're able to flip it and make it their own in present day which like gets on the main like in mainstream music and society and I, so i feel it. like exactly yeah. they're able to yeah. modernize it like that's to me i feel like that's the coolest thing like in yeah, my yeah, personal sure, opinion man. like yeah. it's just you're, you're you're just able to to switch it up, like how they're able to, to, to listen to something and be like, oh, I could totally see this going in a different direction, right? Like they, they, they see it in a, in a view that many people aren't able to see it. And I, I think that's like artistry at, at, at its finest. At its fine. yeah. Well, there we go. We, we thought of the same word. Uh, I was going to say yeah. like, you know, across all mediums, right? You, you, you just see that the power of that. Uh, a big, you know, I mentioned it all the, all the time on the podcast, a uh, big hero of mine, Quentin Tarantino. He like famously said, I steal everything you see is, is stolen from someone. Like I steal every, everything from the greats and exactly your point. You steal something that like, for instance, with Tarantino, he'll steal it from an exploitation movie that was made in the seventies that people probably the average viewer doesn't really know about, but he'll throw it in his movie and make it mainstream, make it for every audience. Like, yeah, like a if they're able of, to take it uh, and, 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 exactly. and yeah, and bring it, to, bring it to light almost in a sense. Yeah. And is that something that you're aiming for uh, as an artist? Like what, what you kind of take inspiration from? For, for, for me, I, I enjoy all kind of facets of music, like all different genres, different times. Um, like if, if, if you ask like me to put my phone on shuffle, like you'd be getting like hard rap, then you'd be getting rock, then you'd be getting like 70s, 60s music, then you'd be getting like trap music, like right after, like there's and then we mix it in with some country. Like there's really no boundaries of what, right, right. for me, it's like, if the song's good, the song's good. You know, like yeah, I don't have I like a, a, a strict genre that I yeah. like. So for me, I find that um, whenever like a beat's given to me and like somebody's like uh, making a beat, it's like, what do I hear on it in a sense? Like, oh, yeah. like this could be like a pop song. This could be like a rap song. This could be, so it kind of, I just get that vision and I don't, I find that with, with, with what I kind of do and what I kind of like to do, I, I sing as well as I rap, which kind of gives me a little bit more freedom in what I'm able mm. to create, I find. So I find that like, depending on, like I said, how the beat comes in and how like it's sounding, I'm able to just be kind of genreless, if that makes sense, where it's right. like, I can switch up my style and, and do kind of anything that feels good. Right. And I feel like that's yeah. kind of the same for even like movies and, and acting and stuff like that. Like you get a script and you kind of make it your own or you or you 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 see kind of inspiration to your story and you make it your own. And and there's no I don't, I don't think that especially in in this type of field, in the creative aspect that you want right. to limit yourself or or confine yourself into such a small space. Right. So that's why I find like, you know, kind of the more genres that I'm doing and that I'm passionate about the more audiences and the more, cause even though I love all music, you know, there's some people who are just strictly country, strictly rap, strictly old time. Like, yeah. like they don't, they don't have like a mix. So I feel yeah. like while I'm doing that, I'm kind of hitting different demographics as I'm going by. Right. Uh, which, which kind of helps as well, but it's just for my love of music that I'm able to hit all those. If that right. makes yeah, sense. No, no. Cause that's, that's you. You've kind of answered a question I was going to allude to is, you know, why do you feel it best represents your discography is the, the, the notion, like you said, of you're, you're trying to show, I guess, your numerous talents and, and, and your numerous respects for all these genres. And I, I kind of, 
actually, uh, I'm happy you said that because I like that idea where uh, you're not focused just on rap. It's like, if the song's good and it sounds better as a pop song or an R&B song, you'll put it as that. Or if it sounds better as country. Um, yeah. And it kind of reminds me, like, you know, I get a lot of vibes, like, you know, a Justin Bieber saw where, you know, he'll collaborate uh, with these other artists, like 10,000 Hours, he'll do country, and then he'll do, like, electronic or EDM with uh, Skrillex yeah. for Where Are You Now? Is that something that you're you're intending to do as well, like, with your music? I would I would love to. Like like I said, like, I, I <laughs> to me, like, music is, like, you know, yeah. I, I find, like, there's no boundaries. Like, you don't want to change your style of how you sing. Like, Justin Bieber doesn't change how he's singing. Yeah. But the vibes just changed. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I got the, you saying. Whole, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Whole, that makes sense. Right? Because it's it's the people that you kind of surround yourself with. So, like, it's a country song because, like, Dan and Shay are making it, like, a country song. And it's 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 an EDM song because Skrillex is, is making it uh, an EDM song. But he's kind of staying to, like, who he is. And because he's, like, very talented and is, uh, has a great voice and all, almost has more of kind of in the same sense where he could do kind of, like, a poppy rap type style – he's able to, to hit a bunch of boundaries, right? He's able to sing more in one song. He's able to rap more in another song. You know, it's, it's, it's truly at his discretion, right? He, yeah. he gets to choose, which I love that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get to choose what you're passionate about and what you want to go on. Well, how you want to be rep um, represented. Like Drake. Yeah. Exactly. How you want to be represented. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even like Drake is, is a good example of somebody who, you know, he's, he's a rapper. But then he's he's got the he'll give you a slow vibe something that's a little yeah. bit more more mainstream or uh, even like I thought in a marketing sense Tusi Slide was just so smart like he yeah. he saw that like TikTok dances were big and he made a song literally that you could do a dance to and yeah. he made it mainstream and he made it like and I just thought that was so smart and he's able to do that because of his talent and how he's he's not just focused like, Oh, I have to be a rapper. Like I can't say I have to be a rapper. Right. He'll give you like a Marvin's room, which is like a, a Drake classic. And it's mm -hmm. literally just him pouring out his feelings and it's a slow jam. Right. It, it's, it's that, it's that again, what we're talking about and what we're kind of reiterating that like, there's no boundaries when it comes to music. Like you have to stay true to yourself as an artist and make sure that you're not trying to copy somebody else, but you're able to do whatever you want to do and that's the type of artist that i kind of look up to and kind of respect is you know they're in charge they don't care how like the world views them if they love their music they'll they know that their fans will love it as well yeah and that, that i think is, is 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 very important because i feel like you can definitely uh uh relate to this is where like you know you're doing something for hours and you're like, okay, is this, is this going to like, is this going to be any good? Like, yeah. are people, are people sure. going to enjoy this? Right. For sure. And yeah. I feel like the best way to is like, do you love it like yourself? And, yeah. and that's when, like, when I write music, I'm like, you know what? Like I enjoy this. And that's how I kind of, cause then you're, you're constantly second guessing mm -hmm. yourself. Right. Yeah. You have to, um, that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because that's something that I've been uh, reflecting on uh, for a while. Like just, sometimes you question like, is it worth it? Or am I on the right path? And that's why I speak a lot about like reminding yourself, like why you started, uh, because there was a time before all the bullshit um, where, you know, I was just a kid that loved movies and I didn't really think about money or status or fame or any of that. And when you get older, things change, right? You're just, there's different influences, different environments. And I think um, in order to have like a strong mentality or the reason why they explain you have to have that tenacity is you have to just block all that out. And you have to just kind of keep true to your original intentions, your good intentions. Exactly. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that point. Is that something that you struggle with as an artist? Uh, honestly, I'll, I'll give myself credit. I have pretty good confidence in what I, in what I do. And I feel right. like I have to, because I, I feel like, you know, you get, excuse my language, but shit on constantly. Like you're always sending yeah. your music out and there's always people who are going to tell you no, right? It, yeah. You're an under, you're, you're an underground uh, artist, right? They're, they're looking for more mainstream people. And you're just, you're just another one of the thousands of millions of people who are sending them uh, another, another song, another tape, another album. Right. So they're barely even looking at it. Everyone's telling you no. So I feel like you have to, you have to have the most confidence in yourself. Right. Yeah you have to be the one who's like, no, like I can do this. I'm, I'm going to push over. And I feel like it's also very important to visualize um, yourself being great, you know, visualize yourself, making it visualize yourself where you want to be in five years 
um, because that's that that's a great way. I, I'm I'm a big believer in manifesting yeah. uh, what you want in this world, For and sure. I feel like when everyone's at your throat telling you no, and you know, even though you have like your family who's supporting you, like no, you can do this, you know, then it starts to become it, it even with them starts to become like oh, you know, another year's going by, nothing's happening, you know, yeah, and yeah. and people people will will believe but their 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 belief will go down and you have to as the artist or as the creator have to keep your your confidence as an all-time high because if you don't believe in yourself no one will no one else will yeah no that's that's no, a no very one's, no one's gonna give you the, the the time of day that's a very that's a very smart point that you made and i wanted to go back to what you're saying about your parents you're alluding to that do you do you like were they always supportive of the dream are they becoming more supportive now do they do always, you have setbacks to always like, yeah I can, always supportive? I can, nice i can you know, gladly say that my parents are huge supporters. Uh, I probably get the most streams from my dad constantly, oh, nice. constantly <laughs> listening to my music. Like, like, and and it's and sometimes it's not That's even true. his style, but he just, he yeah, just, yeah, yeah. He just loves the sound. Like, he just he gets so into it. When when I'm making music, like in the basement, and they're all upstairs, like they're all jamming to it. Like nice, my whole nice. life, like they were like, this is this is what you have to do. Even now, they're right. like this. This is what you have to do. I, I they wanted me to get an education, which is why I went to school and did um four years at ryerson and that's that was that was big for them for me to you know have a have a backup plan of course but they still they still even instill in me which i i love this about them they they're like don't don't worry about your backup plan like don't think about your because right you have to be you have to be so narrow-minded focused that like you can't think what if i fail right you can't you can't told you that they they, they actually told you wow that's unconventional wow (laughs) that's amazing where it's where it's like you know don't work like it, it obviously if it's if it doesn't work out then they made sure i had that backup plan but they never wanted me to think about the backup plan as the main thing right it was always plan b don't ever let it go into your head as plan a which is i find you know very like i'm very thankful to be put in that spot because even now as big as media is and as big as you know music is and 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 different things are it's yeah. it's still almost unconventional you know you see like the classic like parents want you to go into math science you know th- that conventional route but i'm very thankful that um they 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 push me to follow my dreams and they they continuously push me to follow my dreams so That's i very uh, interesting, i got to give man. a shout out yeah no for sure man that like shout out to your parents for sure the, you said something very interesting that i haven't heard I, i'll admit probably never anyone said that before is your parents openly admitted like there should be no backup plan like that's, that's uh, extremely rare because like, so they, they said, um, how do I word this? Right. So they said, yeah. I shouldn't think of the backup plan where it's like, mm. where it's like, you don't want to think like, because then you're, you're thinking like, Oh, if I failed this, I have that right? where you're yeah. not fully driven on what you're doing. You're not fully focused. Yeah. So they like, they, they did make sure I had a backup plan, but they made sure that I never, thought about the backup plan does that make sense yeah, yeah. no like no they, it's they, true man it, it's relatable now because i i have very supportive parents as well like they obviously you know are, are concerned that's why i went to ryerson as well because uh, part of that education you never know um yeah. but i i will have conversations with my mom especially and she'll tell me she's like if you're not strong if you're not you know focused enough if you're not driven enough you have to you be real with yourself now and i think that's her way of saying like yeah, there should be no backup plan like if you want this you have to go after it and yeah. obviously we slip, we have our moments, like we just think, um, you know, we just question things like, you know, uh, whether it's you lose that motivation or you just, again, like you're, you're in a circumstance like the pandemic where you just kind of, you know, tr- muster the energy, the creativity to keep going. But at the end of the day, we always go back to it. That's something that I always find with my work is, you know, I'm always watching films or trying to make films or trying to just stay creative, trying to be in the industry, um, no matter how much of a hard day I have. Do you ever have those slip ups and do you ever find your way back? Yeah, I, I definitely have the slip ups and I'll, uh, I'll give you kind of example. Sure. When I like make a song that I, you know, took, took some time with and I'm like, you know what? Like this song is like, this song slaps. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. And then it doesn't get the streams that I want. Mm. I get, you know, and it's like, for me, it's more so like, it's just deflating. Like when you have to continue to like market the song and it, and it, and it's not getting the streams that you want and you're kind of just sitting there like, shit like this was like if if 
if this was on the radio and a bunch of people heard it, like I, I know like people would love it, but I just, I can't get it to all these people. I can't market myself like this. Like it's not going out. I'm not, I'm not seeing the results, you know, I'm putting in the work, but I'm not seeing the results. And then I'm kind of like, shit. I'm, you know, I'm just kind of like in, in, in my house, just, you know, like staring at a blank wall, like, damn, like I really thought yeah. <laughs> this was going to be the one, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. get, I get those, but then it's kind of like, okay, fuck it. Like I got to get right back to it and I got to, I got to make something better. Right? right. And I got to do something better. And I got to, I got to try to, you know, maybe if I switch this around or I did a different style. Right. So I think that's kind of, um, where I kind of get down and then I bring myself back up. Like, no, you could do this. Like I said before, it's a confidence thing. You have to believe that it'll happen. You have to manifest it. But, um, you can obviously, uh, relate to it. Like it's definitely deflating yeah, when like, no, you, I, you put I so much work and then it's just, yeah. It just, well, that's why, that's what I'm saying is like, you know, I, I don't know if it's cause I'm getting older too. Right. Like I have a, a modesty to me where it's like, you know, when I was like, I'm not that much older than you, but at the same time, like when I was like in my early twenties, especially when I was like late teens, I was like confident as hell. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to make it on this and that. And it's not that I don't have that mentality. I still have that conviction or else I wouldn't go for the dream. It's just like, again, I don't know how to explain it. You kind of get older and you just kind of keep that to yourself because you don't want to voice it too much. Uh, because you realize that uh, as you, you experience where you're like, oh, this song's going to slap, you post it and it only gets like 50 streams. Right. So it's kind of like, you get real with yourself. Like, uh, it's more of a self-awareness that there's a lot of competition. The market will decide at the end of the day, you can't control that. Um, but I think as long as you have that motivation, you have that drive to continue. Like for me, a big thing is I always say it. If I, if you don't believe I, I wouldn't go after this crazy dream if I didn't believe in myself, you know what I mean? And, and the same thing yeah. goes for you, right? Like you wouldn't go go through all this work and all this struggle you wouldn't be posting if you didn't believe you had a shot yeah and exactly a, a thing that i wanted to mention too it may sound selfish but a lot of times you know when i'm talking to colleagues and friends like yeah i believe in them and whatever they're doing but i don't believe in them as much as i believe in myself because i don't know their life i don't know how much they're putting into it i don't know what their talent is i don't even know if they're thinking about it like when they're going to bed like i'm constantly thinking about it and i and, and again you could see be the same for yourself right as much as like I ask you, will I make it? Or you ask me, right? I won't know uh, fully because only you would know. Yeah. You're, you live with yourself every no, day. Only you point. know how much work you're putting in, how much, uh, you know, talent, uh, you, you, how much growth I should mention, I should say, instead of talent, how much growth or progress, because you can have the talent, but are you constantly building out your craft? Are you constantly going at it? And that's why I mentioned it when we first started this conversation is just seeing that progress and seeing you thrive. It's, I, I, I was uh, proud in a sense because, you know, you should be going at it. You should be like constantly being uh, persisting, especially in music. That's something that you can do on your own, like a solo thing, um, like covers and, and the singles and just uploading constantly to Spotify. That's, that's a great, um, a great avenue, like a great, uh, great direction that you're taking. So uh, I commend you for that. And, you know, it takes a Thank lot you. of courage as well. And I wanted to go back to like with the regional arts program, you know, obviously you had friends that were supportive. Obviously, you know, we were in high school at the time, like or you, you were at the time of the regional arts program. Did you ever deal with uh, like those kinds of social pressures of like, why are you in the arts or, you know, why are you pursuing that? Cause I know a lot of creatives struggled with that. And that was one of the influences for dropping out. To, for me personally, yeah. no, like all my, even like my boys, like, you know, like, you know, when you're like really young, it's like, Oh, like, that guy like sings like it's not really you know everyone's like into sports and it's like oh he's like the singer in the group but all my boys are like not nah, like he's like he's the singer in the group like like his stuff's fire like stuff that he does I guess it was because I would do more like you know like rap stuff and more it, we I would be at the vocal night shows at at ease at, at St. Elizabeth and I would be like rapping or I would do some like R&B stuff like I remember I uh, I sang uh, a Tory Lane song mm. uh, and but it was it was more of his like melodic and here I'm falling. Uh, it was more of his, uh, it was more of his uh, melodic, uh, one of his melodic songs. And I remember I sang it and I did like an acoustic version of it. And like, my boys were always supportive. Like they would, they, like, they didn't really love um, the classical stuff and they didn't appreciate that stuff like I did, but they would always show up to the shows that I would do. They would always show up to like, um, even the choir stuff that I would do, which was totally not their stuff, just to show their support. And that's why I'm, I'm saying like, I am so thankful and so blessed to have a, such great friends who even now constantly post my music. 
uh, we're out of high school. We're out of that, that, that kind of, um, cause you know, when you're in high school, it's, it's, everything's kind of closer, right? You see people every day. Um, yeah. you see like just a bunch of people your age who have, um, same desires and same dreams. We're all young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even after high school passed, like I get people still posting my stuff, still reaching out to me saying, Hey, like, I love this, blah, 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 keep going at it, you know? And it's just stuff like that, where I just, um, I don't get to pre, I like even say thank you enough to those people because you know, they, they've been there from the start and they, they don't have to post. Like I've been making, I've been doing singles every two weeks and every two weeks and stuff like that, they're, they're constantly posting on the story and they don't have to do that. Right. right. They're, they're yeah. doing it because they enjoy the music and, 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 and they believe in me and they're, they're great just friends and people in general. So going yeah. back to like the, the arts program, I, I just had such a great uh, unit around me of, of people who, who really believed in me that I never faced any doubt or like that I, that I shouldn't be here. It, it was more so like, Hey, you have a talent and, and, and you're different and, and you have something that a lot of people don't have. And you got to use it. Like that was kind of my friends. Yeah. They were, they, yeah, you got to capitalize on that. And that was kind of how my friends even interactive interacted. But going back even to like high school, I think a big regret of mine is I started making my own, like I was always writing music, but like professionally recording like music, I didn't right. start until first year of university. Oh. And going back to what I'm saying about like, you know, the tight knit group of like high school yeah, and like the tight knit, if I started making music in high school and, yeah. and started doing that, like, because of the people that I had around me and because of like, Oh, this person knows that person. And, and, and all this stuff of how like, again, tight, tight, it was like, just a tight knit group. Of course. Yeah. Like I, a community. I, I just think it, yeah. And the community, I think it would have, it would have expanded so much more. So that's a right. regret that I have just, you know, starting a bit later. Cause even when I was in first year, like, and people were still, still pretty tight, you know, like uh, as friends and as like, you'd still, still see people a lot. Um, the songs there would, would do great because it was still that that close bond whereas now you kind of lose touch with people they're not really seeing your stuff on social media anymore and i think that's the the hardest thing right getting your your creative abilities out of your close-knit group and and, that's a very good point that's a very good point that you just made and and about you know uh i think a lot of artists deal with that uh regret i don't think there's one artist that says i wish i would have done this differently and that um you know, a healthy approach, what I kind of always look at is, you know, cause I, again, I've only started in the last two years to really go full force at this career, like with content, uh, nonstop and just expanding my brand, creating a production company and a clothing line. But, uh, years before that, I was just making a short film once every year or two, which was like, not that great for, uh, the direction of the industry. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what I'm saying is to best counter that to best kind of uh, bring closure to yourself is, you can't, it's like, it's like a lottery ticket, you know? Oh, I should have picked those numbers. I would have got that 50 million instead of that guy. It's like, yeah, but at the time, did you pick those numbers? No. Were you thinking of those numbers? No. You only say that now because you look back. And I think for you, what I'm saying is yeah, high school, hundred percent, that would be the pinnacle because word spreads like wildfire. And that's not because of social media. It's just who, you know, and what they're talking about. And it's not even just in your school. Like it's the board, the district, even the province, you know, it just flies if it's really good. Right. But what at the same time, man, it's like, you know, you, can you say for yourself, like these songs, the, the expertise you have in creating this sound, did you have that in grade nine? Did you possess that? See, like I, I, I didn't in the sense of like, I would, I would, I would write good songs, but I had no idea. I had no idea how to record. I had no idea how to saying, fix my see? voice. Right. Like, yeah, I, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have slapped. Like it wouldn't have been as hard. So yeah, that, yeah. that, that is, that's that what is I'm trying to, point. yeah, that's what I'm trying to make, trying to make you realize, like, obviously this doesn't like uh, you know, uh, beat you up. Like you're not thinking about it every day, but if you do, I, I can relate as an artist. Like if you do have those moments, those thoughts, just tell yourself like in grade nine, was I really making, you know, wavy and like love is ugly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cause if you were, if you did have those lyrics and all you, all it took was recording them, then I would say, okay, Julian, like what the hell? Right. Yeah. Um, or I would just say that was just an immaturity. Like you were just going through a time when you didn't have the courage maybe to post it or whatever. Like, you know, that's your business. I don't know. But then you tell me like, oh, I didn't even have that developed or like, uh, you know, discovered. Can't be yourself up, man. That the grade nine to twelve, that regional arts program, uh, was your stomping ground. Like that was that was where you just learned the craft, you know. And then it just shows in the timeline. First year of university, boom, you know, you're yeah. ready to go and you start creating music. So, you know, like I said, I think 
you know, the big thing for me is, you know, again, we're still in our twenties. We're still young. Uh, you know, Gary V would laugh at us if we call ourselves old, yeah. even though we post, we know what I mean? When it says someone's yeah. birthday, we go, uh, <laughs> happy birthday. You're an old man. The guy's like 22. It's like, are you kidding yeah. me? And I believe that I would get caught up in that because uh, as much as people joke about that on Instagram, I believe in our community in, in Toronto, like we think that like when you start reaching, approaching 25, like you're old. And when you're hit 30, like that's it. You should be married. You should be with kids, have a house. And I look at all these celebrities, you mentioned, you know, Drake. And again, with Gary Vee and these guys, if you think about it, man, they're in their thirties while Gary Vee's in his forties. But a lot of these artists, like they made it big when they were in their thirties, like Eminem didn't break through until he was like 29, 30 years old. And, you know, how, how would they respond to that? That we say like, oh, 22 is old, right? For anyone kind of pursuing that craft, pursuing that journey. We don't see them as old. Do you see Drake as an old man? No, no, no. And you see he's his so lifestyle like me, as yeah. an old man? No, he's yeah. getting more, more attention, more action than anybody we know. Yeah, and literally. he's like pushing 40, you know, and we're, we're here like, you know, posting like happy 22 birthday, uh, you know, hope you have your walker. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. a joke. It's a joke, but I know it's, some people yeah, like mean it's, it's it, bro. Like... Yeah. So I just want to throw that out there, man, because I, I think a lot of artists struggle with that idea um and it's something i have to wrap my head around too like you know the stuff that i'm posting even for yourself because you know you've been a really good supporter on on instagram it's like imagine if he saw my stuff you know five years ago right where would i be in five years now um we can't look at it like that you know so i think it's just uh i think the fact that you're just kind of going at it going at your craft and you just keep going it's like you never know where you're gonna end up and back to your point about saying you know in five years visualizing uh you know where are you gonna end up um, I'm constantly visualizing, right? That's what we do as creators. We're always visualizing uh, where our future is going to be. We can't control and we can't predict exactly how it's going to happen. But I think it's so important to always say like, okay, by 30, I want to do this. And by 35, it's like this. And uh, that that's great, man. I'm, I'm really happy that you have that attitude. I think uh, you have a huge advantage amongst uh, a lot of artists that are maybe like lost in that kind of situation. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think going back to kind of what you just said, it is very important to, like, I never really thought of what you said, like, oh, like, yeah, I should have done this then, but I didn't have the tools, right? Like, I think that's very important, again, to kind of be content with, you know, how your journey is unfolding, right? And, and you know, it's like, okay, I, if I wanted to start there, then I should have learned this, this, this software and, and learned how to do this stuff at an earlier age. So it kind of makes you think, okay, now if I want to be where I want to, uh, where I'm visualizing myself in five years, then I need yeah. to start doing a bunch of different things. So I'm not looking back at five years and say five years, uh, like from now and saying, oh, well at that time I, I, I wasn't knowledgeable enough on this. Well, I think now's the time to get knowledgeable in that and to, and to make yourself have all the, the opportunities around, uh, around you. So you're not limiting yourself to be like, Oh, well, I, I, I didn't really have this at that moment. Right. It's, it's, it's great to see how your story is unfolding, but let's, let's like, like how, how we've been saying this whole time, let's, let's go into this and let's not have any regrets. Let's go yeah. narrow-minded, you know, the backup plans there, but we're not going to look at it and, yeah. and let's really take this thing by the horns. And if yeah. this is something we want to do, we got to put all our time and effort into it. Right. That's true. Yeah. Eat, sleep. Oh, shit <laughs> yeah, literally. yeah. <laughs> you gotta just yeah you gotta you gotta just go for it full force and again uh you know we both uh similar stories similar journeys like went to ryerson because of that idea you know have an education and um what did you study again sorry it was it uh sports marketing uh, i remember you telling me sports uh media yeah sports media okay so which was honestly a great program like but great it, program yeah. i thoroughly enjoyed it just mm -hmm. um I like music it wasn't music. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't music. But at the same time, uh, it's not like you studied engineering. You studied something exactly. that you love sports and you love media. And and it kind of would you, relate. To, and you're so I, yeah, you're integrating yeah. it. And that's kind of like what I'm saying for myself is I brought closure because I was always like, you know, I, I meet filmmakers all the time. Like, oh, I went to film school. I got my MBA in this and whatever. And it's like when I tell them I went to school for marketing, they're like, oh, well, how did you end up in film? Um, I was like, yeah, maybe I should have gone. And I tried, but at the time, this is what I mean by you can't regret the past. You weren't there yet. Like your mind, that's not where you, where you were, what you were thinking. And so what I'm saying is like marketing, right? Sports media, they kind of work into the arts in a way. Um, yeah. 
And you're a big fan of sports as well. You're wearing a Dallas Cowboys hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is like, it's not like you hate sports and you took sports media, yeah, which yeah. would be kind of, right. a, uh, yeah, funny. But yeah, uh, no, yeah, I found, I found that even with like my degree that I was getting, like, because they were teaching you stuff like about like, you know, in the media, in the media field, but even though it was sports media, it would relate totally to like just regular media. Like, Oh, this is how you should market this. And this is how you should post on, on social media platforms and how to uh, make graphics and, and, and do stuff with uh, Photoshop and, and just stuff that, yeah, we're doing it for sports, but a bunch of people in my, in my like class and in my year, they don't have jobs in sports already. Like they're already getting internships and jobs just in regular media because wow. you know, you have, you have the tools for it. So even yeah. though I, I, I took that, I, I really don't have any regrets in taking that. I got the education and I was able to meet some very creative people and do uh, like, even I'll give you an example. Like my, my fourth year that I, that I just finished yep. one of my assignments, I, I took one of my songs and I made a music video for it. Oh, wow. And it, and it was like a high, is that the one in, is that the one in the basement? Is that wavy? Uh, no? no, wavy, wavy oh. was just uh, with like, I got, I got somebody to do that one. This okay, is okay, okay. one I had um, uh, this guy who is actually has a, a big following. His name's uh, Luca and he was in my year and he's nice. a dancer with his girlfriend. And so they, they perform around Canada and around the States. Oh, I saw uh, so this they, one. It was like contemporary dance kind of thing, right? Exactly. So yeah, I, did, yeah. I did that one and, and, uh, and uh, it was just a lot of fun to make. And it, I was, pursuing my my dream in school which i loved i was able to kind of mesh the two worlds together so i mean i i don't have any regrets about about getting the degree because obviously like we're saying i was still able to and same with you yeah right? yeah no it's it, well all, all that we're doing man right it's marketing marketing is the yeah. backbone of the of, of the world right now and uh, if you don't have it if you don't know how to market yourself uh or utilize social media tools uh you're dead in the water in a way uh because that's how we stay relevant that's how we survive and that's what how we keep doing what we love you know uh i can't comprehend the fact can't wrap my head around the fact that like imagine if you created music but you had no platform to post it like the only way to know it is like this conversation right now and say hey man can you check this link when you get a chance yeah. Like think about like the restriction that the, like the amount of limited users to just hear your music. Um, yeah. So credit to like us, like taking advantage of that is so important. And anyone that's like afraid or doesn't, you know, think that they should uh, figure it out because it, in this day and age, like I know there's competition. I know that the market's saturated with like so much content, but you have to put it out. You have yeah. to tell yourself I'm doing it. If you have any you, intention, you never of know. Making it. Yeah, but you never, yeah, exactly. You never know. And of course, there's always going to be competition. The market's only going to get bigger and bigger. But if you're truly meant to have your own voice, it'll be discovered, you know? Yeah. And um, I think it's very important. Yeah, like like I said, with the the, the concept of marketing and, uh, you know, integrating the, uh, the two. Uh, for me, you know, when I was in school, uh, I remember uh, one of my classmates found out I was majoring in marketing. And they're like, why are you taking marketing? It's a cop out. And at the time I took it to heart because I said to myself, yeah, maybe accounting and finance would be considered the more serious. And if you go to universities today, the institutions do classify it as, you know, more prestigious and serious uh, programs. But I look at the world at overall and I say, but who's really like running the world? You know, like the, the marketers, like we're, they're the ones that want your money, not the accountants, yeah. like the accountants. Yeah, of course, like they're the ones that uh, make sure everything's balanced and they crunch the numbers, uh, but you need money to start with in order for them to have a job. And how do you get that money? Well, you have to market your brand. So this leads me to my next point, because again, as a graduate of marketing and I'm a huge advocate of brand exposure, um, I've noticed you've launched the clothing line to coincide with uh, your music fal called Falk One as well. Yeah. And <laughs> so what is, the, uh, what is the intention of expanding your brand from music to merchandise? Well, so I just feel like, you know, un you're, you're an underground artist, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're almost in a sense begging for people to click that link and listen to your music. Right. But at the same time, you don't, you don't want to beg, right. You want to still seem calm, cool, collected, <laughs> but you're basically <laughs> pleading for people to listen to your yeah. music. Right. Like that's yeah, kind of yeah, where yeah, you yeah, are yeah, as, yeah. as, as an underground artist. You can only DM so much. Right? <laughs> exactly. So I yeah. find, I found that, you know, if I was able to make something a little bit more, um, almost in a sense, plain with just like a logo that people could, that, that people would like and enjoy, have my name on it. Right. People, it, it's casual enough that people wear it often. They can wear it outside. They can wear it anywhere. 
um, and it's got my name on it. It's got kind of my album covers on it. And cool. I just find that that's just a way of subconsciously marketing to, to everyone around without shoving it in your face. Yeah. Without me like begging and, 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 you know, pleading and whatever and saying, you know, click that link, listen to my music. Like I, I, I need, I need those streams, right. It's more of a sense of, Oh, like I like that top. And then Falk, who's Falk one, you know, they're kind of like, starter, yeah. it, it's a, it's a conversation starter. Right. And even if two out of a hundred people who got shirts, they're able to have that, that conversation with somebody random who, who just likes the shirt and, and sparks a conversation. It's something, right. It's not, it's something of growth. It's, it's, it's a way yeah. of me of like, we're talking about, it's just a way of marketing yourself in a, in a, in a different aspect. Yep. And um, again, I want to just say thank you to like all the people who support me because, you know, as soon as I launched the thing, I was getting a bunch of DMs like, Oh, I love this one. I love this one. Can I get this one? Can I get nice. to, Oh, I want to get like two here, you know, like just like such supportive people that I have in my life that uh, I can't think enough because without them, you know, it's not really possible for me to, to, to give out all these t-shirts and to have um, that many people interested. Right. So I, I, I really, I really have to say thank you to those people because as much as it's me, you know, marketing it and trying my best, if nobody's buying the t-shirts, you exactly, know, I, yeah. I, I, well, what's the, what's the point? You can, you can, you can agree with that as well with, with your own uh, clothing brand, right? Like the yeah. people who support you, they, they, they further that to the next step. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing is, yeah. So with the 94 collection, it's interesting you bring that up because I was actually having a conversation the other day and, um, you know, we, we were, I was kind of like thinking to myself, the people that I've bought so far from it are, are like, you know, people that support the work, but they're like close to me. You know what I mean? But you also have to kind of be real with yourself as, uh, as well and say, you know, that's the whole point of the, the marketing. That's the whole point of developing yourself as an artist is they're only going to buy it um, or you're only going to expand once you expand yourself as, as an artist, right? Like you have to hit you have to touch people's hearts with your music. You have to um, create that platform. People aren't just going to buy it just to buy it, right? Like right now, right, you had some sales, but eventually you're going to come to a point when it's like the only, the future or potential clients will be the ones that are new customers. Yeah. That'll be like, well, who's this guy? Like a big thing that I always mention is like Drew House. It's like, if you think about it, it's just a smiley face on a hoodie. Now, if some random guy would have make that, okay, maybe eventually it would catch on, but it would take some time, probably yeah. a year, right? with the proper branding, uh, marketing, the execution Bieber sells out first day launches it. Why? Hmm. Because you have that, right. But you have that power behind it. Um, you, so you, anyone that wants to associate with him will buy that brand, right. Yeah. Oval, like with the owl, why is Drake selling out of that? Because again, if anyone who loves Drake's, anyone who loves the music. So that whole intention with my, I'm glad you brought it up with the 94 collection is yeah, it's a great way to merchandise. I love creativity, anything creativity. I also love streetwear and fashion. Mm -hmm. um and it's also a great way to expand my uh my content like with photography and videography but at the same time i know that it's only going to go so far if people enjoy what i do and create you know exactly. what i mean and i think that's what a lot of people that create a clothing line should understand is you know what is your brand represent like what are you what are you trying to push towards it you know because i see a lot of people like it's the it's the quality and it's the style and it's this and that and it's like yeah for sure but i know a lot of people also run off emotion and I know a lot of people will buy it because it's just a statement, you know, a yeah. fashion statement. It's like so that, for example, like brand association. Almost brand association. Sense. Exactly. So for example, like with your, your hoodie, like, let's say like create like a really good song, like some, something that's like, wow, I love the idea that you put the song on your uh, hoodie because what it is, is that that's something that I always imagine where my, the movies or the films that I make, like the features, if they're that popular, successful, you would put that font on the, the hoodie and then people that love your stuff would wear it. Right. Exactly. Um, so, but I'm saying is you, you're in, you, you have the right intentions, like put that music, put that album on the hoodie. Don't just put Falcon, put that design on there because people will, again, conversation starter, but they'll also be like, Oh, that's cool. Is that a song? And then they'll be like, yeah, check it up right now because everyone has a phone, Spotify, Apple, whatever. Exactly. They'll search it up on the spot too. That's what I do. Um, cause I want to hear it right away. It's not like a movie. You have to sit down and like turn the lights off. It's music. You just <laughs> have to yeah, hear and say, that's thing, yeah, it's right? good. And then if they really do like it, that's when they start saying, okay, okay. Like, let me know more about this guy or send me the link. I want to buy more. Um, 
So I think that's just my piece of advice I would tell you is that if you do run into that situation, like, oh, maybe someone's not buying or, you know, not going that far. I think it's best to remind, that's what I do. I remind myself, like, you have to also build the brand, right? You have to build the empire. You can't just expect them just to buy, just to buy, right? Because you will have that point, that cutoff. I don't know if you experienced that, where all the people that are in your life that care about you, that love you, that support you, uh, they're, they're, they bought the product. Now you have yeah. to now target the future. But again, that time will come, your time will come. And I think it's all about having that, uh, that consistency, man, right? It's just that dedication yeah. to the craft. That's the thing. Like you can't, in anything you're doing, like, like how you said previously, there's so many people who want this, right? There's so, there's so much competition that if yeah. you stop for a bit, they'll, they're going to forget about you. If you're not their favorite artist and they're not, yeah. and you know, like they're going to forget about you because there's so many other people who are flooding their timeline who are, who are constantly on their mind. So if you're constantly posting on Instagram and social media and constantly posting out, you know, either films or music or whatever your, your passion is, if you're constantly doing that, you're, you're again, not to use the word constantly all the time, but you're constantly in their mind, right? You're, 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 you're kind of flooding their thoughts. And it's like, Oh, Falk one, Falk one. If they see a bunch of stuff and a bunch of people posting about Falk one, it's like, Hey, who is this guy? Let me actually click on his thing because now you're just curious. You saw it five times on your, on your feed. You're like, I might as well just check it out. Right. And that's the same thing with me. Uh, I don't know about you. When you, when you get the sponsored stuff on, on your Instagram, it's like, okay, first time I scroll by it. Second time I scroll by it. Third time I scroll by it. fourth time. I'm like, okay, this guy's always on my, on, on my feed. Let me check him out. Just, to, and then that's how I kind of, you know, start listening to new, to new people or check out a new brand or just stuff like that. Because it's like a sponsored post. I'm, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm constantly yeah. seeing the same thing. It's like, okay, the first couple of times, I don't know the person I have no, um, What's the word I'm trying to use? I have no, yeah. Like I, I, there's no reason for me to click incentive, on incentive, incentive. Yeah. Incentive. Yeah, yeah. I, there, there's, there's no, there's no reason for me to click on their post, but if I'm seeing it like five times, um, I start to get curious, like, okay, is there a reason this guy's always on my page? Right. Like, exactly. and then you click on it. And, and I think that's why you have to be so consistent with this. And I can, I can relate to when you were like, I was making like one short film a year Like I can relate to that because in university, like people would love this stuff, but the first, like up until like last year, I was doing like one song a year, you know? And I was like, I I, I would do it with um, my buddy uh, with the 108, but we both had such, we both had such busy schedules um, that it was like, we were only able to do one song. So I kept the 108 because I still love that. And we have such a great time, but I found that when I was just doing stuff on my own, I had more free time to just drill out projects, right? And just keep that consistency going. But there was a time when I was like, I'm making good stuff, but I'm only doing one song a year. Like people love it for that for that month. And then it's like, okay, on to the next, right? Yeah. Like they're not thinking about me anymore. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not in their minds. I'm not doing anything to stay in their minds. And I feel yeah. like, again, we're going back to mar- like just the marketing in, in itself. Because like you said, who's kind of ruling the world. It's, it's, it's people who like market. It's the marketers. It's the people that are in your face, man. And, and yeah, it's just back to your point. I I just wanted to mention, like, this is why uh, I had a revelation this pandemic. I, you know, shot a a short film. I directed a a short film in last summer. It was like 20 minutes. I edited it, whatever. And I finished, I wrapped it up around like October, but then I got to, because of the restrictions and the lockdown, whatever, and projects, you know, were unforeseeable. I said to myself, okay, what now? Like I, I felt uh, for the first time, like I, I have nothing to post, you know, and I started getting scared and I said, hold on, there must be something else I can do. And what it was is I'm thinking like too much, I has to be about film. Right. Yeah. And what it is, is that's why I started the corner talks because I love talking about well-being and mental health. I think it's so important. And I, I know it's talked about a lot, but I know it's not in, uh, considered a lot. A lot of people just brush mm-hmm. it off. Like you shouldn't talk about your problems, but in reality, like there's some person listening there's someone that is in dire need of something some some sort of assistance and i also enjoy these vlogs i mean these podcasts right that i do with yourself someone like yourself these creatives discussing their journey and i said you know that's not uh, a short film let's say right that's not you know filmmaking but that's still storytelling which is yeah. what i love that's still part of the dream part of the brand part of the craft and for yourself what i'm saying is if you have you're still very young, right? Like, but if you still have down the road, that uh, passion to do something else that's similar to music, but maybe completely different, like maybe Mm -hmm. start a podcast, right? 
I would encourage you 100% because you want to spread the brand as much as you can. Because people not only will see you as the artist, this is why I had you on the podcast, because I don't want them to see you as Falcone. I want them to see you as Julian Falcone, you know, like someone that's a person that has dreams, that has flaws, just like everyone else, but Mm -hmm. keeps going despite all the, all the rough times, you know? And I think it's so important that people have that transparency, that people see that transparency. That's what marketing is all about. Um, To not show you just the good, the highlight reel, as we see on Instagram, it's to show you the, 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 the grittiness, you know, the humanity uh, that, that resides in. No, that's a great point. Yeah. Like uh, just yeah, to, to piggyback on that. I think that that's, that's a great idea, right? Like that, that any time that you could do what you love, and expand it and grow because you know you as a, as a filmmaker you know you kind of you, you kind of mastered that not not in the sense like you know everything now but you you've you've done it enough where you know you're good at what you do and it's like you know what i also love storytelling let me go into a different avenue and try to you know just kind of polish up everything so i'm i'm uh, more well rounded just in the whole field and i think it's, it's so important. Now you can never be too good at something. You're, you're never too good to try something new and you're never too good at one specific thing where you can't improve. Even with yeah. myself, as much as I'm like, you know, I like how my voice sounds. Yeah. But I can, I can sound better. I can do things where my, I, I can, I can hit higher notes or expand my range. Like there's different techniques that I could do to improve myself. You know, even with myself, I don't know how to play an instrument. So that's something that I'm really uh, trying to do. Like I can get by on the piano, but I'm, I'm not a master at anything. I just know where the notes are. So that's oh, wow. something where I'm, I'm yeah. kind of like, you know what, why don't I, tr- why don't I try and, 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 and challenge myself and, ex- and expand myself? Like kind of how we're saying, because you're never, you're never too good at something. You know, I think that's, yeah. that's a great point that you're kind of making. You, you can never, you can never just settle for what, for what you're doing. You have to, you know, keep going, keep pushing, keep trying different things because that's the only way that we kind of like, for grow. me at least, feel grow and feel happy. Yeah. Like yeah. I find like when I'm, when I'm when I'm sa- yeah satisfied. Like I'm when I'm taking on these challenges, and I'm able to push through all the negative BS that comes along with it, and all those times you want to quit because it's not it's not coming right off the bat. You know, for with music yeah. for me and writing music comes right yeah. off the bat. So I have no problem just writing a song. But yeah. you know, the technology side and then the, the 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 actual like theory side. That's where I'm like I need to take the time. Yeah. So really focus in, hone in and, and push through because it's yeah. easy when, when, when you're good at something to keep going because yeah. you have no struggle with it. Yeah. It's, it's the stuff that you're not familiar with. You know, it's you the stuff challenge that, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You're putting yourself there on Instagram and stuff and, and, and people aren't really following or you only have X amount of followers and you, and you know, you need, you need 50,000 to really get a reach. And it's like, okay, I need that. That's where I need to challenge myself. That's where I need to grow. So uh, that, that, true, that's man. what I find is just such a great point that you, that, yeah, that you thank, stated. Thank you, man. And it's, and it's, uh, you can only go up from there, right. Is, is the fact that you're, you're self-aware, uh, to have that, um, yeah. you know, that you have to always be improving and just always find new ways to be marketable, right. Like get yourself out there. And that's why I commend you for starting that Falk one brand. Um, I think it's highly creative and it's something that's really cool. Thank you. You know, it's, uh, Yeah. It's, it's a great way. Like another thing I wanted to mention, like with marketing is, is also collaboration. That's something that's really advantageous. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that um, after the podcast. But what I'm saying is like, yeah. you know, regarding collaboration, like with other brands and with other people, um, that's what Gary always says is Gary V. He goes, you know, you want to really broaden your reach, you know, try collaborating with other people because just like you have your own audience and they have their own audience. And then you cross paths and then they say, Oh, who's that guy? Well, <laughs> who's this guy? Right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, my microphone went flying, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a cool journey, man. I'm, I'm really happy you, you spent the time to come on the podcast. Uh, a lot of great insights. Uh, everyone check it out. Uh, Falk one. Uh, he's everywhere, right? Spotify, Apple on all streaming yeah. platforms. Yes. Sir. All streaming platforms. Yeah. And it's Falk one is uh, on, your Instagram, uh, right? Yeah. It's underscore Falk one on Instagram. It's underscore Falk one. There you go. So yeah, everybody check him out. Very talented artist. We're excited to see what he has uh, to bring us. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you again, Julian Falcone. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Yeah, no worries. I really appreciate it. For sure, man. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon, guys. Take care, man.